Hey there, friends and foes. Good morning, Multiverse. This is Back of the Cereal Box, Back Issue Breakfast Club. I am your host, the prophet of pop culture, John Pica. You can call me Johnny. And this week, we are going to review Volume 1 and 2 of Chew. And we are going to do that right after this from The Murdering Crows. It's like Coca-Cola, Levi Strauss, Johnny Carson and Mickey Mouse. The first star was James Dean. Elvis Presley and he's still the king. Some things are only imitatable. You can't be that original. All right, guys and gals, we are back. And Back at the Cereal Box is a pop culture podcast that celebrates the fun of the Saturdays of our youth while surviving adulthood today. Now, when I was a kid, Saturdays meant big bowls of cereal, cartoons, kaiju, kung fu movies, and comic books. And because we didn't have smartphones or, or, or tablets at the breakfast table on Saturday morning, in between cartoons kaiju, kung fu movies, and comic books, we were reading the back of the cereal box. And that was our world, our newspaper. For me, that was the exposure to a lot of the pop culture stuff that I love today, including comic books. Some of my very first comic books were prizes inside the cereal box. So if you are here to celebrate the fun of the Saturdays of our youth while surviving adulthood today, you're in the right spot. And we've got something to help along that journey. I love trade paperbacks. I love being able to read an entire series of comics in one sitting because so often, and especially with the with the indies, they really read better in one sitting. And Chu is one of those series. Now, I did not know before I started reading Volume 1 that this is actually a sequel, a spin-off of the other series, Chu, C-H-E-W. This is about um, Saffron Chu on the cover, and she is what they call a Cybopars. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've never read this word before. I started reading this book, but it basically means that she is a psychic that is able to learn secrets from people who she eats with. Her brother, Tony Chu, is a cybopath, and he is able to get psychic impressions from the food he eats, from things he eats, anything he puts in his mouth, which gets a little bit nasty. Anyway, Tony's a cop, Saffron is a thief, and therein is the conflict. And Saffron has a, a crew of thieves. They're going to rob, uh, you know, this big score. And along the way, trouble, hilarity, and family drama ensues. I really love this book. And I really love the character of Saffron. She is a character that you really feel a connection to. She's one of the best kind of characters because you empathize with her and with her situation. Now, the artwork on this is done by Dan Boltwood. It's written by John Lehman. Artwork by Dan Boltwood. And the artwork is very much like a Disney animated series. It has very much a Kim Possible feeling to the artwork. But don't let the artwork fool you because the themes are very mature and there are some scenes that are rather bloody and disgusting and it is not recommended for children. There's some pretty harsh language. Pretty harsh language. 
Um, the book ends, volume one, spoiler alert, ends with Saffron going to prison. Now, that's important to note because volume two ends with a prison break. And this volume two is called She Drunk History. And not only does Saffron have another big score, another big heist, it's a time heist. That was Reagan. Reagan's joining us here in the rec room. This is a heist where there is a special wine that lets the drinker travel back in time. And that's what they're going to steal, more wine. So it's a time travel caper. And again, that great art by Dan Boltwood, a phenomenal script by John Lehman. This book really reads like an animated series, like a movie. It's fast paced. I think I read the entire volume, and this is true in both cases, in maybe an hour and an hour and a half. About the time it spends to watch a feature length animated film. It feels like a movie. It looks like a Disney animated movie but it's written for grown-ups. So if you love Saturday morning cartoons, and if you love comics, but you're looking for something that's a little bit more grown-up and not quite so juvenile, you are going to love Chew by, <clears throat> by John Lehman and Dan Boltwood. These are both published by Image Comics, and the price is right. Just, um, let me see, $16.99 per volume. You get issues one through five in volume one, and then um, six through 10 in volume two. Great value, great reads. You're gonna love this, I guarantee. And look, Reagan loves it so much that she's settling into the recliner to read some more. Well, guys and gals, that is it for this week's review. If you like our show, make sure that you become a supporter at buymeacoffee.com slash CerealBoxPod. Donate two, five, ten dollars $10 to help us create great content just for you. And if you hate the show, donate even more generously to help us improve. And you can get Chew Volume 1 and 2 at our sponsor, T-Fall, Things from Another World. Link is in the show notes. And while you're at it, make sure you share this video, like it, comment, whatever platform you're watching, click subscribe and then the notification bell and never miss another episode. And type a comment. If you've read Chew, let us know what you think. And if you've read the first series, which I haven't yet, let us know how you think the sequel series compares. Well, that's it for this issue of Back Issue Breakfast Club. Chew, Volume 1 and 2 from Image Comics. Pick them up from Things from Another World. And until the next time, love you, mean it. We'll catch you on the back of the cereal box.